Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation skill series and in this video we're going to continue with the auto scaling and this is going to be a lab just to really show you how to do it. So quick reminder what is auto scaling? Well we use auto scaling to basically grow and shrink our resources automatically and this obviously applies uh, in this particular video to virtual private cloud. So this is really about how to grow and shrink the number of virtual servers that you have automatically in VPC. So what you'll need to uh, to do this is obviously a VPC to start with. You'll need a load balancer, so I'm going to show you how to create the load balancer. I'm then going to show you how to create the instance template, and I'm then going to show you how to actually create the instance group. And then after that, I'm actually going to show you the instance group uh, working. So this is a rough architecture overview of what we're going to do. So I'm going to, so I'm going to first of all, I've created my my VPC, so it's in the London region. I've got London 1, 2 and 3 set up with a subnet in each. Now I won't actually have virtual machines already created. You'll see those being created by the uh, by the instance group once it's, create, once it's up and running. Uh, but what will then happen when the instance group is up and running uh, and I start to scale, put load on it, you'll see the virtual machines start to kick in. And then when I stop putting load onto the, uh, onto my websites what you'll see is that the virtual machines start to shut down again okay now I, I am also making reference to something called user data in this video as well so if you're interested in user data and learning a bit more about that then if you go and have a look at this uh, this page on my github site uh, then you'll see some information about user data and also the the uh, the, uh, the example that I'm actually using within this video is documented there as well Okay, so without any further ado, let's head over to IBM Cloud and actually start creating the autoscaler. Okay, so here I'm in my account at cloud.ibm.com and uh, we'll use the menu over here just to navigate off to the VPC screens. So first of all, let's just have a quick look at the VPC that I've already created to, um, to, to set up autoscaling in. So if I use this, this scroll here, so my VPC is called in the cloud VPC. You can see I've got three subnets set up and uh, they're all in different uh, zones, so London 1, 2 and 3. Uh, and just click on each of those, you can see that I've got no virtual server instances currently running. Okay, so let's go and actually set up um, auto-scaling. So the first thing I need to do is create myself a load balancer and this is going to be the auto-scaling load balancer. There's nothing flash or fancy about this. Um, I just create one as ever I normally would. So I just go to load balancers and then hit create. So let's give it a name. So I'm going to call this uh, in the cloud auto scale load bal. So LB, I'll put them under there. Just make sure it's on the right um, private cloud. Uh, so my resource group, I'm using my VPC resource group there and then give this some tags. So I usually put my name against it and I'm going to put in the cloud in there as well so that I know which uh, um, resource it belongs to. Now I've got a choice here between uh, of different types of load balancer. So I've got an application load balancer or a network load balancer. So this is going to be an application load balancer because it's going to be a load balancer for a website. So it's going to be running HTTP. So I'm going to stick with my application load balancer. Uh, the region, I'm going to stick with London because that's where my uh, my VPC is. And in fact, it's the only source I've got. Uh, and I'm also going to make this a public load balancer because um, I want to be able to access it from the internet. Now, in terms of subnets, I'm going to check each of the subnets because I want my uh, load balancer to be able to reach servers that I create through my auto scaling group in each of the subnets. Um, across the uh, across the region and then the next thing I need to do is just create a back-end pool so if I click create new pool I'm going to give it the name so I'm going to call this uh, in the cloud um, auto scale uh, back-end pool so BEP protocol is going to be HTTP and uh, I'm not going to use session stickiness on my website it's not going to worry too much about um, having different sessions on. So I'm going to click none for that. Uh, I'm going to uh, leave the proxy protocol disabled. Um, if you uh, want to know more about that, I'll, I'll record a video later on 
uh, about the load balancer again, which talks about these different proxy protocols. And uh, I'm going to leave the method around Robin. But again, you can use this as a least connection. So if you were to create servers that look different, so or if you had session stickiness, then you might want to go to least connected. Uh, weighted round robin for a uh, auto scale is probably less likely uh, because all of the servers that you create in your auto scale group are going to be the same. So I'm going to leave that at round robin. And then in terms of the health check, uh, so this is about um, making sure that the servers in the back end pool, i.e., the scales, that the the servers that we're auto scaling are healthy. Um, this is about the, auto, the the load balancer making sure of that fact. So I'm going to use the health protocols HTTP because again it's a web server. So I'm going to put it on port 80. The interval is going to be five seconds. So every five seconds, it's going to run this health check to each of the different servers. Timeout is going to be two seconds. So two seconds to work out whether or not it's dead. If it doesn't reply within two seconds, it will retry. And it will retry that a maximum of two times. If it doesn't get a reply within two retries, it will determine the server's dead. So I'm going to click Save there. Now, I'm not going to attach any virtual server instances to my backend pool because right now there are no servers. And in fact, if you're um, using a load balancer for auto scaling, in fact, you need to start off uh, when you're set up the auto scaling to have no virtual servers uh, in your backend pool group. Uh, I'm also going to set up a front end listener. So I'm just going to click create listener. So it's going to be listening for HTTP. Uh, it's going to be on port 80. And uh, this is the back end pool, so it's the one we just created. And I'm not going to set a maximum connections, but again, you know, if I wanted a maximum number of connections to my website, then I could set that here. But leaving it blank means that um, it will just keep accepting connections for as long as I want it to. So um, that's that done. Uh, let's uh, just create the load balancer. Click that button there. And uh, we'll just need to uh, wait a few moments whilst, uh, whilst the load balancer is up and running. Uh, but in the meantime, what we can then do, uh, so let's just make sure it does that. So you send that it's been requested and it's now going to be creating. So you can see it's now creating. Okay, so um, the next thing we need to do is actually create our instance template. So let's just click on the link over here. So instance templates for VPC. So this is where we actually create the template for the virtual machines that we want um, Autoscaler to build for us uh, when it decides that a new machine is, is, is required. So I'm going to click the Create button here and then just uh, describe my virtual machine. So I'm going to give it a unique name. Now, what happens is when the Autoscaler creates new servers, it will use this unique name and then append a code on the end of it to make sure that the server is, is unique. So I'm going to call this uh, uh, in the cloud. Uh, web server and do that. So I leave it at that. Uh, the virtual private cloud is obviously in the cloud VPC, so where it's going to create it. And then I want these to, to uh, I want this machine to create in a particular resource group. I want it to go into my VPC resource group. Now, in terms of location, uh, I can choose uh, I can choose any of these. So it basically dictates which location. Uh, is the first location for my for my first uh, machine when it's created. So, um, or, or indeed, if I did choose not to load balance and put things into different zones, then um, it will stick with, with one particular zone. Uh, we can leave that at London 3. What we'll see later is it actually creates machines across the different zones because I'm going to put a load balancer on this. So I'm going to uh, retain the type of virtual server at public, uh, and I'm also going to use CentOS for my operating system. Now, the other thing you can do is if you do have uh, a, a suitable image for your server, remember it needs to be in QCAL2 format, uh, you can also create an image. Uh, perhaps later on I'll record a video about using a custom image as well, but uh, I'm going to stick with just using a, a basic operating system for now. Uh, then I just need to choose a profile. So what, you know, what properties do I want my server to have in terms of memory and RAM. I'm going to choose a, uh, a compute 2 vCPU 4 gig of RAM server. So I'm just going to choose that and then just click save there. So you can see that populates. And I'm going to choose my SSH key. So again, I need to make sure that I've got an SSH key on this and obviously one on that's available for me to go and administer the server if I need to. 
Now the next thing I need to do is, at, no, the next thing I'm going to use is some user data. So um, if you've seen uh, other videos that I've created, um, I have a video on using user data. And what this allows me to do um, is actually pass a load of commands into the server when it's built, uh, which means that it will install things and it will start things up for me. So um, I'm just going to press paste there. And I'm not going to reveal all of this because um, it does actually um, show a, uh, a password for some of my uh, for some of my inf information. But basically, what this is doing is um, it's doing something. It's it's actually cr um, installing uh, HTTPD on the server when it creates. It's then installing something called S3FS, which then means that my server can connect a drive to object storage as though it's native. What it will then do is set up S3FS and connect to my object storage drive. It will then uh, copy a load of data, which is effectively my website, from object storage onto my server. Um, it will then change the permissions on those files so that the web server will work. And it will then start the web server up. So you can see this HTTP minus K start a link there. So at the end of the video, I'll give you a link uh, to a, um, a GitHub repository where I explain user data a, a little bit in a little bit more in depth. So you can go and have a look at that. But this is a really good way to set the server up so that it's actually doing the thing that you want it to do in the first place. Um, so the next thing is the boot volume. I'm going to leave the boot volume as it is, and I'm also going to leave the data volume as it is as well. And I'm also going to leave the network interface as it is as well. But again, I can tailor these if, if I if I actually want to. Okay, so that's all I need to do. Um, I'm then just going to uh, click the Create Instance Template. And what you'll see now is it's going to go away. It's going to create that template for me. So right now we've created the template. We've created the, uh, the load balancer. Right now we still have no machine. So if I go and look at my VPC layout, uh, what you'll see in here is that we still have no virtual machines actually running at this point. Okay, so let's just check that my load balance is created because um, this is important in the next step. So yes, you can see, I just refreshed the machine, uh, the, the screen a bit too quickly there. Uh, but what you can see here is that my in the cloud auto scale load balancer is now active, so that's great. So what I can now do is actually go and create my instance group. So let's click instance group down here. Right, so let's uh, create our instance group. So we just click the Create button over here uh, to get going. So let's give our instance group a name. So it's got to be a very unique name. So I'm going to call this uh, In the Cloud uh, WS for Web Server and IG for Instance Group. And then I'm going to add it to a resource group. So it's IM Managed. So let's put it into my VPC resource group and give it some tags as usual. So I'm going to use my name for a tag and then uh, in the cloud, um, so I know which project it belongs to. Uh, I'm going to choose London as the region, so I can only choose one region at a time. I'm going to choose London for my region uh, because that's where my VPC is based, so I'm going to leave that there. So next we select the instance template. So remember, we've just created the instance template. Now, if I had more than one instance template, I'd see a bit of a list here, uh, but I've only got one. Um, so I'm also just going to click the one that I've got, just make sure it's checked there. And um, the next thing I need to do is look at subnets and load balancers. So with the subnets, which subnets do I actually want the, um, the auto scaler to create um, instances of virtual machines on using the, uh, using the template? So I want it to be across my uh, all three of my subnets um, that I've already got created. But obviously I've got quite a complicated um, subnet structure. I'd see lots there and I'll be able to choose the ones that I wanted. Uh, now I'm going to use a load balancer. So what this means is that when uh, when a virtual server instance is created, it will automatically be attached to the load balancer that I'm going to de uh, that I'm going to declare here. So this is the load balancer we we created a few moments ago, uh, and this is the uh, this is the pool that we created. So the application port that's going to be 80 because these are web servers. Okay, so next up we have the uh, the, the the scaling method. So I can make the scaling method either static. So if I if I choose static, then uh, what I then get is a um, an instance group size. So then I have to choose whether or not 
or how many instances I want to be in my group. So for example, I could choose five, and that means that when the instance group gets created, um, I'll see five virtual servers, and uh, I'll always see five virtual servers, so it won't scale up or down. But the, but the idea of this is that if something happens which maybe knocks one of your servers out, so perhaps a physical host fails and, and a VSI um, disappears, or maybe an even even a, you know an entire zone might go down, then uh, what this will do is, is make sure that you always have at least this number of virtual server instances running. So it'll see that maybe one has disappeared and then it will start up a fifth one for you. I'm gonna use dynamic though. So, so with this, my all instance group scales within a set range. So here I need to set my minimum number of instances. So for that, I'm gonna choose two. Um, so I always want to have at least two instances running. Um, and then I'm gonna choose a maximum instances. So I can choose anything here between one and uh, 100. So one obviously doesn't work because my minimum is two, so it has to be more than uh, has to be more than two or two or more. So um, I'm gonna uh, I can go up to a thousand. I'm gonna choose ten. Now the important thing here to remember is that you know if your auto scaler is left and you set it to a thousand, then if the auto scaler actually uh, actually creates a thousand instances, you're gonna have to pay for a thousand instances of usage. So, so bear that in mind when you're actually setting the instance group size that you know when you when you do start to scale out if you start to add machines then that also adds cost to your to your bill so bear that in mind I'm going to set this for, to 10 anyway to uh, so I don't go above 10 next the aggregation window so this is how often is the auto scaler going to check to see whether or not it needs to scale up or down so I'm going to set this between uh, 90 or 600 seconds I'm going to choose 90 seconds. So every minute and a half, the aggregator is going to run and it's going to see whether or not the conditions are right to either scale up or scale down my group. And then I have a cool down period. So the cool down period is a period of time after the auto scaler is scaled up or down where it will wait until it actually uh, does, an, another, you know, does the next action. So it will always give you a bit of a cool down period just to make sure that you know, um, you're not doing things too quickly as it were. So I'm going to choose 120 seconds, so that's two minutes. So it'll be two minutes whilst the autoscaler decides whether or not what you've what, what it's put in place, i.e. the way it's scaled, is actually meeting the needs of your of your rules. So when I talk about rules, what I actually mean is is scaling policies. So to do this we add a policy and you can you can add you can add multiple policies if you want to. So you can have them on CPU usage, and it's a that's like a, a percentage. Uh, you can have uh, RAM usage, so again, another percentage. You can also have network in, so how much stuff is coming into your servers. That's in megabits per second. And you can choose uh, uh, between one and, uh, what's that, 100,000 megabits per second, or you can have network out. So I'm gonna choose network out, uh, and I'm gonna choose a really low number, so one, because I want to show you this working. So I'm gonna save that. But if I wanted to add other policies, and I can do that as well by clicking this add a policy button and then add in other ones as well. So I'm gonna cancel that because I only want this one to run. Okay, so the next thing to do is just uh, check this box here to agree that the instances are created and reclaimed according to the instance group settings. So I'm gonna tick the box there. So remember when you've got this running, you know the, the, the scaler will scale the machines that it thinks you need. So if you set this number too high, then you might get a bill that you're not expecting, just to let you know. So I'm gonna click Create Instance Group, and it's just gonna go away now and create the instance group for me. And what you'll see straight away there is it's saying that it's scaling. So it's actually scaling because it's creating the first two instances for me. So if you remember, when I set my instance group up, I said that I wanted a minimum of two instances. So that's exactly what it's now creating for me. So we'll just uh, let that go for a second. I'll just refresh the screen here. And there we go, we can now see that it's healthy. So if we actually go to, uh, to our virtual server instances over here, you can see here that it's created two, two VSIs for me. So you can see that they're called in the cloud WSIG, and then it's giving it a, a sort of a unique tag along here, and the same one here. So these are the two machines that it's created. And then if I go to my VPC layout and just show you my subnets, 
then you can see that it's created those machines. So one in London 2 and one in London 3. So I've got a highly available configuration here as well. Okay, so let's go back to my, um, let's just go back to my instance groups. Well, first of all, let's actually, let's just go to my, um, to my load balancer uh, and then just grab the name, the host name of my load balancer. This is the load balancer we've got. Just going to copy the host name again and then let's just go down to the instance groups. So there we go. We can still, still see that we're in a, in a healthy mode. So what I'm going to do now is actually um, just try and show you this scaling. So I'm going to do that using a terminal session and what I'm going to do is use curl to actually hit the load balancer and generate some load. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm, I'm using a, a, a Mac here, so it's obviously a Linux-based operating system. So I'm going to use a, a, a while true loop effectively to do this. So what I'm going to do is type in a while true um, do, and I'm going to hit it with a curl. So I'm going to curl HTTP, and then the address of my load balancer, and then I'm going to hit done. I'm going to let that run and all this code that you can see running through here is basically the curl command going away and actually hitting my load balancer. Now remember it might take a, a minute or two for this to actually react because of course it, 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 it um, um, takes 90 seconds between, uh, between assessments of what's going on with the load balancer or, or with, with, the, with the instance group. So it might just take a, a minute or two to, to, to go through. But um, let's just switch over to server instances and then just refresh the screen a couple of times. And there we go. Now just refresh the screen. You can see that because I'm hitting the um, hitting the web server, you can see that it's now actually starting up some additional instances for me. So you can see these ones are starting. You see that they're, they're, the, they're for the right um, cloud. You can see they're in the cloud and obviously they've Got the same name. So that's the auto scaler actually in work now starting things up for me because I'm actually hitting the, uh, the, the web server here. So let's just refresh one more time and then you can see that those instances are actually running. So that took a little while to actually um, start to uh, start to scale because don't forget um, it had already scaled up two machines for me uh, when the uh, when the instance group was created and, and put live. So then it had to wait um, a few minutes uh, before it then actually went on to check again and, and then scale. And it's going to take another couple of minutes now just to just to go and uh, check and uh, see if I need to scale any further. So uh, the transverse of that to see it scaling down is basically I hit the, uh, the control C button there and stop. And then uh, hopefully what we'll see in, a, in another couple of minutes, and again, I might may, may pause the video here. Uh, what we may then see is that the um, the instances start to go down, and eventually they'll go back down to down to two again. Actually, very quickly, let's go and have a look at our VPC layout. So again, you can just see how the how the machines are actually spread over our over our subnets. So again, you can see now that I've got machines. They're actually spread across all the different subnets. So I've got two in London 2, two in London 3, and one in London 1. So again, it's actually spreading the load um, uh, across my subnets, and again, making things nicely highly available for me too. Okay, let's see if they're um, starting to switch themselves off yet. So there you go. You can now see that some of them are stopping, and that's because my script has stopped, so, so my, uh, my, my website isn't being hit as hard. So actually the three that it created are now being shut down. And um, perhaps if I refresh my screen one more time, uh, you can now see that they've gone. So, um, so I'm back to my original two machines. And there you go, and that's the end of the video. So hopefully you've seen from that that it's actually really easy to auto scale resources within virtual private cloud. So what you need is your VPC, uh, then you create your load balancer, then you create your instance template, and then all you do is create your instance group and you're good to go. So as I mentioned, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. It's great to have you here. Um, if you like this video, why not subscribe to the channel and be notified when new videos drop. But in the meantime, thanks once again for watching and I'll see you next time.